Good morning, everybody. How you doing? Are we awake? Not really. Wake up, everybody. It's video games. It's MAGFest. Make some noise for MAGFest. Uh, yeah. Everybody's real excited today. Yeah. Who's hungover? <laughs> <laughs> the guy in the back. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, this is the... Uh, What's the name of this panel again? Uh, we're arcade repair. Arcade repair panel. How we're going to show you how to. Felix. We're going to show you how to fix arcade games. How to be your own fix it, Felix. Anybody own arcade machines? You do? Okay. What do you have? I have an old Street Fighter cab. I'm trying to make it into a main cab. Yeah. Yep. I knew that was going to happen. Okay. What about no? Let's, no. Go ahead. No, it's just someone got it and I just sold it. Yeah. 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 No, that's what you do. Yeah. Uh, anybody else? Arcade cabs? What do you have? Is the main cab made from another cabinet? It's like one of those things where people were like building main cabs. Yeah. Like years ago. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, uh, I have a main cab that I built, and I built it out of a dark, uh, gauntlet dark legacy machine. And if you've seen that, it's the Alpha 33, the Atari cabinet. Uh, and it was the four player, and I just basically ruined it by putting all the my own buttons on it and putting a converter box in it and making it so it's a MAME cab. So, and it works out really good, but now it's taking up too much space and I have to get rid of it. So, and I've got a whole bunch of other arcade machines that I own. So, uh, I own about 20 arcade machines. John, how many do you own? 14 pinball machines. 14 pinball machines. Uh, who, who, anybody got a pinball machine? Who wants a pinball? Nobody? Who or, wants a pinball machine? What there we go. There we go. Anybody and got a, uh, a holy grail for pinball? Holy grail for pinball machine? No? You don't have one that you really, really want to get? Or just any pinball machine? Adam Good choice. Good choice. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool. Well, we're going to show you a few things about how to fix your own arcade machines if you have them or if you're going to own them. How to make it so that you don't have to spend a lot of money getting somebody else to come repair it for you. It's like simple fixes we're going to do for you today. And we're going to show you on these two machines here. Uh, I got this Ms. Pac-Man here that I got for free. Uh, I get a lot of my games for free. In fact, I went through my house, all 20 of my machines. I think I've only paid for like four of them out of the 20. The rest of them I've gotten. People gave to me or the companies that I work with, we would just get them from them. Uh, I work for GameWorks, which is, uh, you know, everybody's been telling me all weekend, rest in peace, GameWorks, because they are no longer available. Uh, and uh, they, they uh, I did repairs for them the past, like, uh, few years. Before that, I worked for Great Wolf Lodge as a technician for them. Uh, before that, I worked for Namco as a technician and a route manager running around repairing games, repairing games inside the store. Before that, I worked for Chuck E. Cheese. So I've been doing this business for about 25, 20, 25 years. And uh, it's a lot of fun for me. I just like it. It's just, you know, what I like to do is just fix. I like fixing stuff. I mean, you know, I like learning, but I, I never went to school for it. A lot of people are like, well, how, how long did you go to school to learn these things? And I'm like, I didn't. I just, I just had the initiative to take myself to go ahead and try to figure out how this thing works and how to fix it. And that's what I do. So, uh, John, how long have you been working on games? I've been working on games for about 10 years, specifically pinball machines. That tends to be my specialty. Um, I worked for the Baltimore Pinball Museum when it was open back in the day. I don't know if anyone's local and has been there, um, but it unfortunately shut down a number of years ago. Uh, and since then, I've been working with MAGFest and uh, working to keep the games alive here. So everything you see on the floor, uh, us two, not everything you see on the floor, but everything that's owned by MAGFest itself, uh, MAGFest does own some of the games down there. It's our sort of purview to make sure they keep running. So don't blame us if things are down. Only blame us if MAGFest things are down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. Uh, so yeah, we're going to show you a couple of quick fixes on these games here. Uh, this is Miss Pac-Man. Uh, this is Xenon. This is mine. This was my project machine. Uh, anybody got any project machines they're working on, like they're trying to make a machine out of another machine or trying to fix up something? Anybody doing that? No? Uh, yeah. Um, okay, cool. Uh, so uh, this is my Xenon here. Uh, let me switch spots with you. Uh, this Xenon here, I got it for free. This lady said, uh, hey, uh, I just don't want this pinball machine anymore. Uh, it works perfectly fine, which is always a lie. Anybody always. that tells you that they're giving you something for free and it works, they're probably lying. Or they just don't know. Anyway, I went to go pick the machine up. 
uh, about four or five years ago, and uh, I could tell that it wasn't working because the rubbers on the flippers were uh, messed up. Uh, these rubbers around here are messed up. These were burned inside of it. There's like a bunch of fuses that were all blown and everything like that. So it ended up being a fix for me, and I ended up going through repairing a bunch of things. There were some things I had to buy myself to get the, to get the machine working. Uh, in fact, it was a new computer board I had to buy, which uh, cost me about $250 for that. So all in all, all the parts I bought and spent to fix this free machine up that worked perfectly fine, about seven, $800 to fix it. So it happens, you know, you can't do anything about that, but you know, sometimes game, game fixing is expensive sometimes. You can't help it, you have to do what you have to do. But if you have the knowledge to be able to fix a lot of your own problems, then you want to worry about things. There are things that need to be replaced that you have to replace, and those are the parts that are the things that you're gonna have to buy. And uh, for these, the coils, that the flippers, and all the things that pop and make the thing make a bunch of noise, those are kind of expensive, maybe 15, 20 bucks yep. for a coil. Yeah, yeah it depends but, on the coil. Sometimes yeah. they're 10, sometimes they can be 20 or 25. So. Yeah, and these, uh, this machine has about 20 coils. So 20 bucks a coil at 20 bucks a piece, that's a bit of an ad adds up, but yeah. It, uh, it becomes expensive, you got all the lights, everything like that, so. Um, but yeah, uh, we're gonna show you some things on this. There's some minor fixes that need to be done on this one, which is what we're gonna do here today. And uh, there's some adjustments. Where's that rejuvenator at? Oh, it's behind you. Um, there's adjustments, like when you have screens that are messed up, because all these are, these are CRT. And the CRT machines, those are the old school. Oh, we got a question from the audience. Do you want to take yeah. those? Yeah, question. Yeah. I just want to say, this gentleman on the ground says, when Colin is uh, video playing, it's time to walk into my life. And I had to go to the first aid and do an incident report, and then I had to go to the report. You guys need to be trained about looking out for disabled people. And I, what I suggest that you both do is go down to the VA, the Veterans Administration Hospital, and volunteer at the VA hospital and see how people are in wheelchairs, no arms, no legs. I'm a disabled veteran. And well, thank you for your service. I appreciate thank you. Thank you for your service, ma'am. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate you no, coming out. Okay. Okay. We understand that, ma'am. We apologize. We are looking into changing our policies to make sure we have two people on games at all times. That's something that's important, game moving, move, being able to move the game and being able to properly... Well, you should have thought about, about that in the first place. If you can't see anything, then you should have a second person. And one of them one of that. That's common sense. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, thank you, thank you. Yes, when it comes to moving games, it's very important that uh, if you need help, you get help. Uh, we had a basketball, those basketball machines you've seen down in the arcade. When we took those apart, for when we moved out of the GameWorks location, there was six of them, and it was two people that did that. And those machines are very heavy, and the cages are really, it's really a it's three to four man job. We did it with two people but we were the only two people working for the company at the time, so we kind of didn't have much of a choice as far as doing that. It's very dangerous. Uh, it's, very, it's very much suggested that you get as many people as you can to help you when you need the help. Uh, we ended up taking it apart, but then when we got here, we went ahead and put the basketball machines together, and we had six people to do it, and instead of it taking about an hour to take one machine apart, it took about five minutes to put the machine together. So. It's, if you have the help, you can get it, you need it, yeah, do that if you can. So, um, like I said, this is a rejuvenator. This rejuvenator is a little box here, and it's for CRTs, uh, the old school cathode ray tube machines, which is what this Pac-Man is running on, this Miss Pac-Man is running on. And we have a, a CRT in here. It's always suggested that you try to keep and preserve the CRTs. The CRTs are better, it just makes the picture look better. Yeah, I know a lot of people get the LCDs and HD screens. Yeah. What's that? LCD replacements. Uh, they're, they're really good. They're easy to put in. However, they're lighter. They make the game lighter, but overall, the picture quality just doesn't have the same feel as an original arcade machine. It just does not feel the same. 
You feel the same way about that? Uh, MAGFest <laughs> feels the same way about that. MAGFest will do its best to always have original equipment inside the games. Um, that is part of what we do in terms of game preservation. Uh, it's really important to us, so uh, occasionally you will see a game down there with an LCD, but we try and keep away from that. Um, those usually come from individual collectors that have sh made, made that choice. Yeah. However, if it's a choice you have to make, um, there's some games that you just can't do it or you just can't afford or you're just not willing to work on the parts yeah. You know at the same time you do you and and this is about home repair. Yeah, it's home repair it, So yeah. whatever makes whatever makes you happy at the house like I have a I have a multi-cade machine That multi-cade had a CRT in it. I tried to fix it. I couldn't get it to work I did what I could there were some other problems with it I had a birthday party coming up and I really needed to get that machine working so people would at least be able to play it I found a 24-inch LCD screen and was able to put that inside of there temporarily for people to be able to play it while it was around. But it's not making me happy. I want it to look like the, what it did before I, uh, what's the question? I was just wondering, um, at that birthday party, did anyone ask about the LCD screen? Nobody, yeah, nobody cared. Nobody cared. Yeah, I mean, but for me, it just hurts my eye. I mean, you have that that thing that you like, you look at something that belongs to you and you're like, man, if I really, if I, had, yeah, you just want it to look the way you want it to look, so. Uh, but yeah, uh, so this is a CRT, I mean, I'm sorry, this is a um, rejuvenator, a monitor rejuvenator. Uh, when it comes to monitors, they are very dangerous uh, sometimes. Has anybody ever played The Sims? Who's played The Sims? Put your hand up, made some, played The Sims. You ever play The Sims and you have that in the spot in the game where you're trying to repair your TV, but you didn't read up on the TV on how to fix it and then your guy gets electrocuted and dies? Yeah, that's 100% true. Because that, yeah, the, uh, the CRTs can hurt you a lot. I've, I've, had, I've, ha I've been shocked by a CRT and it hurts. Have you ever been shocked by a CRT? I've been lucky enough to have never been shocked by a CRT. I've been shocked by a I've CRT. I've been shocked by pinball machines. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've been shocked by a CRT three times three times and it hurts really bad because this holds a lot of juice and if you're not careful, I, uh, you have to discharge the thing to make, get all the electricity out of it and even after you do that, once you do it, it still builds up a little bit of a charge afterwards. That's when I made my mistake because at the time I was, I was still kind of new not knowing what to do with those and there's a little cap on the back of the uh, monitor and that cap is like, uh, what's that cap called? The, um, the, uh, yeah, the anode, the anode, yeah. So I, uh, I didn't, wasn't paying attention, and I put my hand up in there trying to find the hole, not thinking about it, and boom, got, it knocked me up against the wall. I was at work, it knocked me up against the wall. I immediately got up and just walked to the front and started counting tickets for kids. I didn't, I didn't, didn't know what to do, because I was just so, like, I almost had a heart attack doing that. But yeah, it's very, sometimes it can be very, very dangerous, but this is a machine here that will uh, take care of some of those problems. Like, uh, let's go ahead and turn the Miss Pac-Man on. On the top. And some of you, uh, we'll try to see if we can get this. So yeah, this is kind of a specialty tool, um, but as you guys know, as uh, people, as, as time goes on and these tools become available, you know, they do become available on places like eBay, on things like Craigslist, Craigslist. so you can find them and you can actually achieve having a tool set like this at home. Um, again, it's not always cheap, but it's something that if you are looking to do work with monitors on a regular basis for your collection, it's something that you're going to want to try to think about. Um, and going back to the safety issue, you know, we talk about things, you know, monitors in the kilovolt range, and they draw a lot of current, so voltage and current, not, not a good combination for the human. But don't be scared. Just do your research, educate yourself, and then if you have questions, ask people. Ask people online, go to forums. Um, all of that sort of stuff. Don't be scared to do it. Just be cautious about it. Yeah, be very cautious about it. I remember the first time I ever discharged a monitor. I was working at Chuck E. Cheese back in the mid '90s, and I'm gonna tell you right now, we had a Mortal Kombat 2 machine, and the monitor broke, and so we had a Fighters History machine, and we decided to swap the monitor out. And the head tech, I was, I was just a, I was a guy that filled tickets and unjammed coins every once in a while. That was my job, and I was still learning the job. And the, the thing was, we wanted to swap those monitors out, so we were gonna take it out of Fighter's History and put it in Mortal Kombat 2, but we didn't know how to do it. So one of the guys called the head technician, and the head technician, sleepy guy, kinda high most of the time, was just like, uh, just get a screwdriver and get some wire and wrap it around it and put it on the metal frame, 
and then touch that cap on the top and it'll, you'll see a big spark. And we're just like, okay. But we were scared to do it. So what we did was, uh, we, did, we, we were scared to do it. So we said, well, if I'm getting shocked, you're getting shocked. So we went arm in arm and was able to, we did arm in arm and both was holding on to it and boom, got the cap off, got the monitor replaced. We did it ourselves. That guy was home getting high, I guess. But uh, yeah, we were able to switch it out and do it ourselves. And that was one of my first big fixes that I ever had for arcade stuff. So once I learned how to do that, I was like, well, that was interesting. I just learned something. Now I want to know more. And I just kept going and kept going. And that was like 94. So that was like almost like 26 years, 27 years ago. And now I'm still here doing yeah. this thing. Can everybody see this Miss Pac-Man machine? You can mostly, mostly you can see that. I'm going to tip it a little bit so you can actually see it. You see how dark that screen is? The screen's not supposed to be that dark. You know, when you play the game, it looks kind of, I mean, you're, fu you know, some people don't care. They just play it. I got this for free. A guy just had it sitting there. He just didn't want to get rid of it. And he asked me if I wanted it. So I told him, yeah, I would take it. So this is the type of problems that you have with a monitor. The eats are not bright enough, not colorful enough. There's adjustments on the back that you could do, but you can only do so much. And uh, once you uh, have the game to where you want it to be, it, you know, you just go from there. But so this machine basically, uh, it basically shocks the uh, neck board uh, that has the um, guns, which is the, what is it? Uh, the electrode guns. Yeah, yeah. The ele yeah, electrode guns. Fire towards the screen. Yeah, I'm really discombobulated. But anyway, uh, but yeah, but that's what this does. This little machine right here, it's a tester and a rejuvenator, and it actually will uh, pull your colors, brightness higher, uh, and make your monitor that probably like 30 years old last a little bit longer before you have to get it replaced. Does somebody have a question? I thought I saw somebody's hand up. No? Well, what's up? I was going to ask like, is everything shocked if it's turned off? I guess It will shock you if it's turned off. Yes. Yeah, if it's turned off. Yeah. yeah. If, if it's you gotta. It, whenever you do work with these, you have to unplug the uh, the monitor. You have to unplug the whole machine, and you have to discharge the monitor. And once you discharge it, still don't touch that spot because it takes a while for that charge to completely go away. Once once you discharge it, you're getting rid of like 90, 95 percent of the charge, but sometimes the charge will build back up and get back up to like maybe 20, 25 percent. You so if you do it and you come back about 20 minutes later and you do it again, you might, you might see another spark when you try to discharge it, just to make sure that it's completely discharged before you touch it, because it will, yeah, it will shock the shit out of you, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's very different. The, the tube itself is actually one of the pieces, and there's a power supply and then there's a tube. The power supply plugs into the back of the tube. So when you plug the power supply, you know, the tube actually acts as a capacitor itself. And that is where you get your problem because the tube is actually a giant capacitor. And so as it's acting like a giant capacitor, it can store charge and that's really what gets you. Yeah, I don't even know if you have those. I've never really worked much with HD TVs or LCDs. I don't even know if they have that issue anymore. No, they, they don't. They have driver boards yeah, and then so. they have some substrates and that's about it. They're very low voltage. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, this uh, this will pull up your colors, make them a little bit brighter uh, to make your screen last longer. Uh, yeah, and and tube replacements is is like actually replacing the physical tube is one of the more difficult tasks that you're going to run into. Uh, mostly because I don't know if how many people know this, but CRTs are not manufactured anymore. Specifically, tubes are not manufactured anymore, and so as they are, uh, they must be pulled from old TVs. Um, there's a lot of resources, again, on the internet that tell you what tubes match up to what power supplies. So if you do some basic research, the, the reason we don't have a big presentation with all of these links and stuff is because the research that you, your basic Google searches will bring this stuff up very quickly because there's a very vibrant community around restoring these things and keeping these things together. Um, I think I saw your hand go up first. Yes. So this has so uh, okay. So let's let's go ahead and turn this around. I'll show you. Um, yeah. While you're turning that around, we had another question. Yeah. 
So they have a finite lifespan. Um, there's only so number of a number of service hours that they can they can take before they just get too dim, and so he's going to rejuvenate it, which adds some life. You can't rejuvenate forever, um, so at some point uh, you're going to need to replace a tube. There's also something which you guys are all probably familiar with called screen burn-in, and so yeah, I've seen a lot of shaking heads. So people have seen that Pac-Man map probably on an old arcade machine that has something like a dig dug in it or something, and. So um, as you're, uh, as if, if you have something like burn-in and you want a really crisp game, you may choose to replace the tube. Um, and there's, there's a lot of people out there that will help identify uh, TVs because obviously CRTs these days are practically free. So some of these parts, you know, tube rejuvenators can be expensive. Um, the tools, um, you know, basic things like a multimeter, um, that's... Yes, that is, that is rule number one. We probably should open with that. A multimeter is your best friend. Um, you don't have to buy an expensive one. Uh, you're gonna want the expensive one at some point, but you don't have to buy the expensive one, but having a multimeter with you at all times is going to help you diagnose so many problems. Um, but, yeah, so you can see, you can actually see here, this, this piece up here is the tube. Um, and, and if anybody wants to get closer, feel free to come closer. We don't yeah. bite. Um, and down here, this is where you see these little circuitry in the electronics is yeah, where you have the, the power supply. Yeah. And this is the game here itself, right? This is the game board because all the old game boards were really simple. Uh, if you see any uh, dead animals in here like that cricket right there, uh, don't worry about the cricket or dead mice. I've seen those before too. Uh, but yeah, this is the game board. Uh, this is <clears throat> giving everything that goes onto the screen. Uh, like I said, okay, so the anode here is what I was talking about, that's sh getting shocked. This needs to be discharged. Uh, <clears throat> what, <clears throat> what's that? Yeah, 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 that's what I'm talking about. So if you just take this off and put your hand on there, boom, you're gonna be really, you're gonna be in the hospital, pretty much, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's the, that's the cap that you have to discharge. So what you usually do for discharging a monitor, you connect, uh, do you have the alligator clips? Do you have any? Um, I do have alligator clips. But I, yeah. But anyway, so you take an alligator clip, you put it on the, the here for the uh, ground, and then you attach the other part of the alligator clip to like maybe a screwdriver or something, another metal piece, and then you use the, that to pop that off. You can take this off and then do it, or you can just do it with, while it's on there so you can pop it off with the screwdriver. But either way, once you get that off, just keep tapping that little hole because there's a little metal piece inside of there, a little metal ring. Keep tapping that, and that discharges the monitor once you do that. Yeah, it's usually yeah. a little clip. It's usually like a little uh, clip that, because uh, it's a circle, and uh, the clip usually holds on to the, uh, to the metal piece to keep it in place. And uh, for anybody wondering, this has what's called, it's got a kill switch in it. Yeah. So as when he took the back off, this switch is actually designed to make sure the power is cut to the machine. Um, but for the most part, obviously, if you're working on electronics, you've got to make sure they're powered off. We happen to know that this one has a kill switch. So as you pulled the back off, the power dies. But if you want to keep the kill switch on, say you're, you take the back off, once the game powers off, you, you won't know if the game's working or not. A majority of these kill switches, once it presses in, it turns the game on. But you can also pull it out, and it'll actually yep. turn it on, yep. too. The whole point of the kill switch is to keep the game from getting electricity when you don't want it to have electricity. And when you're taking the back off, you definitely don't want to have any electricity running through it, especially if you're looking back here. So once you take this off, it does, it does that. So, but like I said, when you pull this little switch here, it actually would turn everything back on. But you don't want to leave it like that. And a lot of people, I've seen so many people will take this off and just wire it so that it stays on all the time. You can do that, but that's, I don't suggest that because uh, that's yeah. the whole purpose is to keep you from getting Hurting electrocuted. Yes. Yeah, yes. pretty much, yeah. But yeah, pretty much, yeah. But this is the, uh, the neck board for the monitor itself. And these connectors here for this, there's different ones. Uh, let me see, the one that, uh, the most typical one is uh, one of these right here. It's just, uh, comes off. 
and there's a bunch of these in here. There's probably should be more, but I don't have that many. Uh, so that's what these are for, and this connects to the back of the neck board once you have everything hooked up. Uh, once you discharge the monitor, you take that off, you hook these up there, and you can actually uh, rejuvenate the monitor that way. But you have to have this really close. It's a long process. It probably will take you about 15 minutes, maybe, depending on what's wrong with it. Uh, depending on what, it, it'll tell you, hey, color blue is not doing so well, you know, but colors red and green are doing pretty good. So you want to re, uh, rejuvenate, you know, red or whatever. And uh, once you do that, you'll test it again. And it'll show, hey, red's working really good now. And these other two are working really good now. You don't want to rejuvenate a color that's already working because that will lower the lifespan of that particular color. So you got red, green, and blue. It's always red, green, and blue. And it's going to tell you. That's what these on here tell you. Each one is a different color. So this is red. Red and black and white. This one is green and this one is blue. And that coordinates with the colors that are on here. So, question? Um, will this rejuvenator work with color black and white monitors or is it just a color monitor? It, it's made for color monitors. I've never tried it with a black and white monitor before, but I could, I could, I, it's got a black and white section, so I would think that it would work for an old black and white TV. But I don't know that for a fact because I've never tried it. Question? How, how much is the rejuvenator? How much is it redemptive? Oh, it's probably like about. This is probably like maybe three, four hundred, something like that. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's the reason we don't put a specific price to it is because the price these things are all ancient. Um, so where you find them when you find them on Craigslist, sometimes you have an old serviceman uh, or service person who. Um, has, is getting rid of all their old equipment and sometimes they let it go for dirt cheap or if you go on eBay, so then you're going to be paying the three, four hundred dollars. Um, so there's just a lot of variance out there in terms yeah. of the use. Or equipment. if you work for a company that does it and then the company closes down, you get it for free. So that's how it works for me. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, you can basically do it until because once you rejuvenate a monitor, I'll show you later. Once you rejuvenate a specific color, that color will be rejuvenated, and it may last a week, it may last a year, it may last five, ten years. But once it starts going dim, once you rejuvenate it, and it's still dim, that's basically, it tells the game, the, the monitor will tell you whether or not you're going to be able to rejuvenate it anymore. You can only do it so many times before it's completely dead, and then you have to replace it. So, and replacing it is, it's, it's yeah, like he was saying, it's, it depends on like something like this would be not too hard because it's got you know it's got all the stuff you need to remove it and everything like that. So. It's only for screens. Yeah. Uh, I don't know anything about yeah, that. It's, I wouldn't it's, know. It's only for CRTs. Um, L LCD screens. Uh, the way the pixel circuitry is, de is developed and the way that the layers are put in the factory, you really like if you have a dead pixel on a screen, you're done. Yeah, um, you're, you got to replace the whole. But thing. if you're talking about a monitor going dim, LCD monitors have uh, they have the L uh, LED uh, LED LCD strips. It's just light. It has a backlight, yep. and the backlight is what you're going to replace. Like we had a Batman at where I work. It's a newer Batman, and it's got light strips going across it, and you can see in certain sections that the light strips are out. And in the manual, not in the manual, but that might, might be in the manual. In the manual, it gives you a breakdown of how the monitor is put together. You can actually take the whole thing apart, and they buy. You can buy an LED strip to replace that to re uh, get the screen back up, or you can go out and buy a TV from Best Buy and replace it too. That's pretty much what my company would do. They would just buy a new TV, and. Instead of showing normal colors, it's becoming more reddish hue. More reddish? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how many LEDs. With that, you probably want to check your color or your, because um, there's warm and cool settings on there. Didn't do anything? Okay. Yeah, so there's a good chance that you may just be dead in yeah. the water. How did you know ADPDs have like tiny dials, dials for different colors like that? Okay. There's probably 
speaks more to the software issue because you were testing it effectively. You had a question? Okay, so we had a question. You have a question? I didn't hear what he said. Does it work with vector displays? I've never, never messed with them. I don't have any. Yeah, I've never had a vector machine, so I wouldn't know. You can rejuvenate vector displays. Um, so it is, uh, as, as you probably know, since you're asking about it, vectors are uh, unobtainium. So keeping a vector display <laughs> around as long as possible is definitely in your best interest. Because um, if you ever lose that tube, um, you, are, you are in a rough spot for replacing it because everybody who has, um, you know, a Tempest or an Asteroids, uh, obviously those are two different vectors. One's a color vector, one's, yeah, one's a black color, and white one's vector. Black and white, yeah. But people are, are desperately looking for those tubes and tubes that work. So, um, yes, you can rejuvenate a vector and you will get that sharpness back. Um, but, uh, so it's, it's definitely in your best interest to do that. Yep. For which one? For CRTs. Yeah, they have. You can you can find them easily. Like like you said, it was a, it's an easy Google search. Whatever you're looking for, you have to find the exact model and look up that, and it'll give you a schematic. It'll give you a breakdown. It'll give you everything that you need, and it's just a really quick Google search. Oh, are you mailing me? Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, I, I've looked at videos online of how they make uh, CRT tubes, and it's very complicated. Uh, yeah, there's just no, there's no demand for them because, um, you know, the arcade community is relatively small compared to what manufacturers want to spin up a factory to, to make a CRT. Well, yeah. somebody, somebody may in the future, and uh, I don't know, that could be you someday. Um, there you go. So, yeah, <laughs> if, if you want to get into CRT manufacturing, that, you know, there'd be a whole community of people that would line up at your door to buy new tubes. Yeah. There, there is a thing where uh, you can, and I've never tried this myself, but I've seen people that do, that do it. They'll get old CRT televisions that are compatible with arcade machine hardware. And by that, I mean... There are certain TVs that actually you can actually jimmy rig it so that you can actually use it in a in a arcade machine. Uh, and I've never done that myself, but I've known people to do that, and I've seen plenty of videos of people doing that. And uh, it just it's it's a great thing because you see people throwing CRTs away all the time. I don't know if you guys heard about this, but I know there was a guy in Richmond who kept getting pinged on people's door cams, he would go and take an <laughs> he would go and take CRT TVs and just leave them on people's doorsteps. And you heard about that? Yeah, and uh, we made jokes because a friend of mine owns a lot of CRTs and we were saying, that's our friend, is that him? And, and it, it wasn't him, but it was pretty funny. But yeah, uh, but you can do that. I don't know how to do that. I've never tried that myself, but it can be done. That's, that's again where your internet searches come. We have a question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pawn Stars. Oh, you mean like take like uh, buying in a game or selling a game to a pawn shop? Yeah, it depends on the game. A lot of games, like this game here, I got this for free. My friend just didn't want it anymore. Uh, the value of this machine is pretty much. It's, 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 it's valuable to whoever wants to play it, but as far as somebody buying it or trying to sell it to a pawn shop, uh, the pawn shop will, uh, I guess they'll take money for it, but it really depends. They don't care about the condition of the machine. They don't know a lot about the machines, and a lot of times what they'll do is they'll try to give you as low as possible. They won't turn around and fix it or do anything to it. They'll just sell it for another higher amount, which is, yeah, that's how pawn shops work. Who cares about that? But, but this right now, uh, if I were to try to sell this online, I would have to sell it cheaper because somebody modified it 
Uh, this is actually not an original. The board is original, but it has modified chips in it to make it speed. It's a speed hack for the game. And uh, yeah, it's got a speed hack in it. And also, somebody painted the cabinet a nice, pretty purple. This is not the original artwork on the side. The front still has a lot of the original artwork. This is would be considered in OK condition, but not good condition. And when you, if you want to try to sell this to a pawn shop, yeah, they'll buy it. But they don't care about, they don't research it to find out the value of the machine itself. And, yeah. and, and the people that do, like on, on Pawn Stars or some, some show like that, they're searching, they're searching out like the Holy Grail machines. So they're searching out the ones that are really expensive that they know they can flip for a lot of money. And um, that is something that there are people out there that do, that will, that will buy a machine that they know will go for a lot of money and do things like, because you can strip this paint, well, it's, this, is, this is kind of a little rough, but you can usually re redo these cabinets just like they were original and then they become a lot more desirable. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, does that answer your question? Thank you, yes. Okay. Great. Cool, awesome. What, what are our holy grails? Oh, what does that mean? Yes. Oh, oh my machine? Oh, I already have all of them. Uh, one is a Dragon's Lair, I own that. One is a Dance Dance Revolution, I own that. And the other one is a Poppin' Music, and I own all three of them, so. At, well, my Holy Grail for yeah. pinball, though, would be a Indiana Jones pinball adventure. So, and yeah, Holy Grail is, is, is actually somewhat subjective to a lot of people. Yeah. Um, there's some machines, like there's a pinball machine that they've made three of. Um, uh, and there's a pinball machine. It, it's actually called Big Bang Bar. Um, I've been lucky enough to work on it. Um, they, they actually, then they, they went back and they made 50 more. But the original three would be considered something like a Holy Grail because that's a very collectible item. It was one of the last games made by Capcom when Capcom mm -hmm. was into pinball, which I don't know if you know that, but Capcom managed to make pinball machines and not use any of their properties to make those pinball machines. Yeah. Same with Sega. You never saw, you saw Sonic Spinball, but you never saw Sonic the Pinball Machine. That didn't yeah. make any sense. They, they had but, a, yeah, they had a, Sega had a couple of pinball machines. In fact, there was a game called Titanic. It was, a, it was a redemption game, and it was one of those games where it shows the Titanic spinning around and the lights go around it, and you have to hit the button at the right time type of thing. When I went to go work on it, uh, I'm looking at this machine, and I'm like, what is this? I'm, uh, the guts of the machine, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Well, it turns out it was their pinball hardware that they used to make the game work. And so when I called them and asked them about it, they were like, yeah, you, yeah it's like, that's our pinball hardware. We, we don't... We don't we don't make pinballs anymore, but yeah, that's basically what's inside of there is our pinball hardware to make a redemption game. So, And, and I think that's another good point. Um, a lot of hardware, um, so things like game boards aren't really manufactured anymore, but again, I talk about the community. It's a wonderful community to get into. Um, of, of course, you have your, your positive and negatives with any community, but it's generally a really supportive community, and it's a community that uh, has gone to the... Um, great lengths to remanufacture a lot of these old parts. So when we talk about CRTs, you know, I bring that up that, hey, maybe you'll do it in the future because people do go out and work with manufacturers to produce these old parts. So Xenon, um, I mean, people have even reproduced the play field. People have reproduced the, like all of the solenoids. So those, those are parts that are not manufactured by the original manufacturer anymore. Um, Bally Pinball has not existed is since the late 80s, I think. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't quote me on that, yeah. but um, it, is not, it, it was bought by Williams Pinball, and then Williams Pinball decided that gambling machines and slot machines were more important, so they stopped making pinball altogether. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, and so uh, the, you know, the community around this, like uh, it's getting into it now is a really good time, and really researching these machines and just getting one now is not a bad time because of the availability of parts. People remanufacture chips. Um, I mean, there's, there's all sorts of um, really great resources for actually fixing up your game. So when he says you see spent $800 to fix this free game, he was able to spend $800 to fix this free game rather than having to source parts on eBay and things like that. So um, it's, it's a really good time to really research this stuff and um, get into it without the fear of, oh, I'll never get this part unless it's something like a vector game or something like that in which you just have to cross your fingers that it never dies. Yeah. All right, so with this one, I wanna go ahead and 
attempt to rejuvenate this monitor. You guys, most of y'all saw the monitor. It's very dark, very uh, crap colors. And I want to try to run this rejuvenator on it to see if I can bring, bring that brightness back to it. And so uh, when you're doing these, I'm just going to go through step by step. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. Uh, you have uh, an alligator clips and all that stuff, or at least, yeah. Yeah, I got a fr our friend down there, a buffet. He was running the uh, tournament, some of the tournaments down there for like uh, ice cold beer and the crane game tournament. He's very, he doesn't care. He'll just be like, oh, okay, rip, just rip it off. And he'll just put it, he doesn't, he doesn't care. And I'm just, he's a big dude, so he just doesn't really, he, he, he just does whatever he wants. And I'm just like, nah, I got shocked once. I'm not doing that anymore. So, but, uh, yes. <laughs> my, my rule is generally um, if you have a question about it, ask. Um, because obviously we, we have the internet these days, and if you're concerned about something, ask somebody online or search for it first. But ask somebody online, and you will get uh, you will get a response from somebody that says, "Hey, do this, but." Be wary of this, this, and that. Yeah, or sometimes they'll tag other people into the thing for you or say, hey, this person is an expert with this. Go ahead and talk to this guy. Like, so, uh, so anyway, we're going to go ahead and clip this to the uh, board here. The chassis, yeah. And uh, you have a screwdriver? Yep. Flathead screwdriver to get that anode off. So yeah, the first time I, like I said, the first time I did this, me and another guy, we just basically. Uh so this is really the home way of doing this. Um, so that's, that's sort of what we're geared for. We, there are also tools to do this if you're not feeling comfortable. Specifically, again, we bring up vector monitors. But vector monitors, um, you do not want to do this method because you could ruin the monitor and hurt yourself. Um, but with, uh, there is a tool, it, it measures extremely high voltages. So these are in the kilovolts, like I said. Um, and so the, uh, the, the actual tool will, you can ground out the, it's, it's basically a big long thing. It's got an alligator clip on one side and a big long insulated handle on the other that you can actually stick the tip in to discharge the monitor and you actually get a voltage reading that it's, it's down to zero. Um, Cause especially on vector monitors, I know on my Tempest um, or it's actually MagFest Tempest, um, you can actually watch the meter go down to zero, but on CRTs that doesn't happen just because of the design. All right, so what I'm doing is, is well, you're gonna make sure this stays on here. You need a small screwdriver? Huh? That's, 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 that's the best one to do. Oh, uh, yeah. It'll work fine to stay on here. As long as you know this uh, is on here, when you, when you do it, you have a small one? Yep. Uh, as long as you know this is on here when you're doing it, uh, you'll be able to discharge this monitor. Um, He's going to find a smaller one. This one's pretty thick. thick. Uh, so we're going to see if we can get another a smaller one. This too. is also nine-tenths of what you'll be doing when fixing your games is searching for your tools. <laughs> Always. Let me see if I can do it with this one. Okay. All right. Stand First time I did this, we didn't have alligator clips. I just took some wire and I s exposed the wire and wrapped it around the edge of the screwdriver. Took the other part of the wire, wrapped it around the thing, and did it. So. What? Um, I don't know the answer to that question. Yeah, so I've, I've, I've never, I don't, I've never worked with a. It, it may be voltage charging. Um, I got it. Yeah. Yep. All right. So what I do is this goes in uh, this section here which I'm probably blocking. Back here is the little metal uh, cup. I fell off again. This little metal cup a hole, and that's what you want to discharge. You just basically want to straight on there. Anyway. Can you do the other there side? All right, so you basically, I don't know if you're going to see a spark or not. If anybody's looking here, you might see a spark. I'm not sure. Oops, you heard that? Yep. Everybody heard that, right? Yeah. Yep. That's a discharge right there. I usually do it a few times just to get it out of there. Okay, so now the monitor's discharged. 
you can, you st I still don't suggest that you touch this with your hands. There we go. Would you recommend insulated blood as possible? Um, you can do that. I've never done that, and I've never really seen anybody do that, but it's something you can do. Uh, the whole wrist thingy, I don't, what's that thing? The, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've never used one of those because I've discharged a monitor, and I'm always scared that if I have something that's going to pull electricity and go to my arm, that's a place I really don't want it to happen. It's like, but yeah, so once you discharge it, I, I usually discharge it. I try, I just keep doing it until I'm comfortable that it's not uh, going to explode on me. Yep, see, when I just did it there, I saw a tiny spark. It was enough of a spark, but to uh, give me something. So, so uh, with this rejuvenator, so this uh, neck board, you want to remove this neck board. This just basically just wiggles off, pops off. And that's the, the uh, back connector for the neck board. Once this is done, you'll be able to connect a rejuvenator to this to uh, redo the monitor. Let me see if I hopefully. Uh, can somebody give me a chair real quick? Just to the side. Because these cords for these are not long. Right, so uh, okay, cool. All right, so this little uh, piece goes on the back of the neck board, uh, the back of the neck of the board, of uh, the the monitor, and whenever you do that, uh, this is made. It's dummy proof. So it's got a design in it to keep you from accidentally uh, messing something up. So, and this just basically goes right onto here. And boom, it's already on. That's why you all have those different fittings because different tubes will have different uh, pinouts. So you have different fittings for different tubes. Yeah, there's instructions on how to do this. I'm gonna show you real quick. So whenever you're using this, you wanna start from zero. So you turn everything down. Uh, turn everything off or down because there's adjustments you're gonna have to make in order to uh, get this going. So right now it's off and then when I turn it on, you'll see it light up, it powers up. And there's settings you have to do for this. This one is, uh, what is the cutoff? Wait, where am I at? Okay. There's different uh, modes you can set it to and you're gonna have to look at the instructions. It depends on the monitor, but uh, usually for me, I set it to the second setting, which is, says four to seven. I have no idea what that means. I, like I said, they just they gave me the directions. I just memorized them, and now I know how to do it. But yeah, if you've ever used, uh, if you ever worked with vacuum tubes and used a vacuum tube tester, it's the exact same thing. In that you just they they come with these huge manuals full of all the different tubes, and they tell you what settings to put everything at. Yeah. There's a reason behind it, but as a technician. Um, you're, you're generally just working on stuff to make sure it gets back working and you're not really worried about the theory behind it. Yeah. All right, so the next one is going to set up. Wait, wrong, wait hold on. Oh, there we go, it's cut off. All right, so the heater setting on this thing, you have to have, oh, well, can't even get this heater go up. I'm gonna have to redo this. Let me go back, let me go up one more. There we go. There we go, okay. So uh, there's a certain dial-in you have to do for these to, uh, oh man, this is weird. Oh yeah, do you need to put the anode back in? The what now? Oh yeah, you're right, my bad. Wait, no, the anode? Yeah, do you rejuvenate with it or without it then? Uh, I, I always keep, do I keep it off? I think I do it without. I don't think I usually, because it, it, it's just doing here, so it's not going up there. That's for this. That's for the for the monitor itself. I've never. I don't. Okay. You probably can do that. I've, I don't think I've ever done that. 
Uh, let's see, here we go. If you have uh, questions about tube rejuvenation, this is the expert. I am not the expert. This there. is uh, this has always been a, a bit of a mystery to me. So I'm I'm I love seeing it happen. I've seen it happen dozens of times, but I do not know the intricacies of these uh, of these machines. So you and me both. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> all right. So that one is set up, and then this one is set to that one's set to. It's, it's already set, isn't it? No. Okay. Okay. So, have we successfully not frightened everybody away from working on these things? <laughs> okay, that's that's what we want to do. Um, we, we want you to be excited about it. We talk a lot about caution because we want lots of caution, but uh, you know, we want you to be excited about fixing stuff because you can do it. Every single person in this room here can do all of this. Well, I already worked at Arcade, so I don't really have my knowledge. Okay. I still have experience with the CRT stuff. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. Working on, so do you work on game boards? Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a really valuable skill because game boards are hard to fix and hard to diagnose. Awesome. Okay, That's cool. great. All right, so I got this set up. Like I said, you can look online. It shows you how to set it up. It depends on the game itself. And then you go to test mode. Now, when you go to test, what you're going to look for on this machine here is that these are in the green section for good. And if they're not that particular color, this is red, green, and blue. So what you're looking for is them to be in the good section. If they don't go all the way up to good, that particular red, green, or blue needs to be rejuvenated. So I'll switch it over to test now. Okay, so now you see how this one right here didn't go up at all, this, uh, this one right here? That one didn't go up at all, so that needs to be rejuvenated, green does. And this one, the red and black and white, didn't barely went up, it's still in the bad section. What you want it to be is in the green section. So this one you would not rejuvenate because it's already good. These two you would. So once you do that, uh, you switch it over to restore and pop this over to rejuvenate. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna press this button here and this is going to basically shock the back. So if you, if you look back here in this monitor, you can actually see it glowing. It's got neck glow on it. If you look really close, you see that? You can see yeah, that it's, it's glowing glow back it's there. It's glowing like, so a li like an you, old light bulb would. Yeah, so just keep standing there, stay there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press this button and it's going, you're gonna see sparks start to fly through that. So I'm gonna do that on the count of three. One, two, three. Oh, we lost our glow. Yep, and then that's, that's it. That's it for that one. And then you wait a few seconds. And the glow comes back. And yeah, and the glow comes back and you just do it again. Maybe do it like three or four times. Number two. Okay, and we'll do it three times. Number three. And Clearly we should have invested in a go. camera. I know, right? <laughs> so that was the red and black and white. Now I'm going to do green. Like I said, this last one doesn't need to be done because it was already in a good section. So here's number this one. You see the sparks there. It goes down, and then it, boom. Yeah, you'll see it. Yeah, it, yeah. it looks like an old school light bulb. Yep. And do a number two. Yeah. And I'm going to do it a third time. One, two, three. And you'll see it sparking up. There we go. All right, so now that I've done that, what I have to do is uh, reset everything. So I'm going to cut everything off, redo all the settings for it, and then, sh uh, and then we're going to go ahead and try it again and check and do the test for it again. So everything's got to be turned all the way down. And then you start over from the beginning. You set the cutoff, the heater setting. You set the voltage. And then you go to the next one. And you do these each one increment up to 
agree. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to test mode. And remember how this one was in the green? These two, this one was really bad. I'm sorry, this one was really bad and this one was a little bit okay. So when I go to test mode, we'll see if these all get in the green section. So go to test and let it sit for, see, see now you'll see it up. And if you let it sit for like a 30 seconds, it's going to calibrate itself. And so now all of these are all green. So once I'm done with that, that means this is good. We can go ahead and cut this off, unplug it, unplug everything from the game. And I'm gonna spin this thing around. And some, some adjustments are gonna have to be made afterwards, like color-wise. But other than that, okay, and I always discharge it because it just I just gave yes. it some electricity. Always discharge. Yeah, always discharge. Constantly discharging. What do I do with my stuff? It's right behind you, under Xena. So if you guys are looking, see if you see that spark again this time. If you didn't get a chance to see it, see if you can see that spark come onto the... Uh, it's not as likely to happen, but it still can. Yeah. And... Nope, there's a teeny bit of some spark, but not that bad. What is that thing you do in the that red, The red cap? Yeah. The anode. And why did you remove it before plugging in your test machine? Uh, that's just the way I was taught how to do it. Uh, I don't know if you can have this on while it's doing it. I've never never had it on there. I've never, I've been, I don't know why. Nobody's ever told me why. They just told me, hey, take that off. And so that's what I did. It is a safety thing. Anytime you're working near a monitor, it's a good idea to have it discharged. Um, that being said, you can pull things like that neck board off without any danger. Um, it's just if you're going to be working around the monitor a lot, um, you want to make sure that you discharge it so that nothing happens. Yes, that's, that's, that's literally the rule, is like better safe than sorry. It's always better to do something, take an extra step of safety, um, because when we, you know, again, we talk about voltages that can really hurt you or throw you across the room. Um, you know, this is, it's, it's not as modern, in modern technology, we don't deal with such high voltages. Most things are low voltage applications, which uh, five volts can give you a little buzz, but it's not gonna throw you across the room. Oh yes, yes, yes. Of course, if there's if there's enough current going through it, anything anything can happen. But um, most voltages uh, people are are using for low voltage applications because most everything is battery powered and things like that. Um, so everybody's looking to reduce the amount of power going into this. Yes, yeah. Low. That That's an excellent point. Very good, very good. That's your microphone. Pocket mic. So we're testing this. Remember when we were talking about the kill switch in the back? It's popped right now. So if, if I turn this machine on, the game's not going to cut off. Well, like I said, you pull that thing, you can actually check it because it's not a thing where you want to have the back on the machine. You'll check it, it's not very tight. Get the back off again. Back. So anyway, so let's see. Brighter, some of the colors being wow. adjusted. Yeah, you see how it looks now compared to what it looked like before. 
still some adjustments need to be made, like oh, thickness wise. That is significant. But it's a big difference between. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah man. arcade room, the Marvel vs. Capcom 2 Japanese appears to be like the only colors visible on the screen are red and white. Would you be using this tool to fix that? Yes, that tube needs rejuvenated. That's actually my game, and that tube needs rejuvenated. You're 100% you're right. Yeah, if you're looking at the two of them, it's the right one. Because all the, that, that monitor is adjusted, it just, uh, it is not rejuvenated. Power issue. That, oh, that'll be sometimes that's a different issue. We won't worry about that right now. But that was the thing I want to show you. I don't know if you can see this. If you look really close, you see that wave yeah. Yeah. going across. Yeah. So basically, what that is is on that, that on that uh, monitor chassis board. Can we make some room um, for for the person coming up? Thank you, guys. Uh, so what I did was I adjusted this color. So the color on this was very, very dark, really bad, because after a while, it's been around for a while, it's probably never been rejuvenated before. And so the screen gets really dark, it gets dim, it loses its color. And once it does that, this little machine right here, as old as it is, it's a machine that's made for making adjustments to this to make the color brighter. So before, this was very dark. You could barely see what was going on. But now I rejuvenate it. It looks completely different than what it did before. Yeah, it was it was almost you. Everybody, uh, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. From where I was sitting, I, I couldn't see anything. I can't even see it at all. You couldn't see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not from here. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Um, are you able to see the screen? Yes. Okay. Great. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
this Everybody will be able to see this, even even from your seats. So, um, yeah. you know. So, Xenon, 1980, the very first pinball machine to have a woman's voice in it. The woman's voice, she did all the sounds for the game. Uh, named Susan Chiani, she's a synth artist. She does music, and she did all the sounds for the game. So everything you hear on here, every sound you hear on this, even the guy's sound, that's all her. She did all that. She did all that. And if you look her up, look up Susan Chiani. It's spelled C I A N N I, I think. Uh, look her up. There's an episode of a show called Omni from the UK back in 1980, and it's a video of her making the sounds for this game. Susan Chiani. And uh, she's on that episode of Omni. It's like a seven minute old spot, and it's her showing how she made the sounds for the pinball machine. And it's her, I guess they commissioned her to do the, the game. But if you look her up, she's also on an episode of David Letterman where she's like manipulating his voice and using all her synth equipment to do stuff. And she's on an episode of um, David Letterman from like mid 80s. All right, so pinball machines. Um, you got all the coils, you got all the lights. This is Xenon. Uh, all the electronics um, generally are in the back box. Um, it, will, it will change depending on what era the game is from, but most of the electronics, you, you have the uh, high voltage in the base because that's the heavy part, and then um, you put the uh, CPU board and everything up top. Um, this game might actually have the transformer and everything in the top. I don't, I don't remember offhand, but um, for, for anybody who's never seen the inside of a pinball machine, we're about to pull the glass. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh, you're going to open up the back box first? Okay. All right, so this is the back box. This is where all the electronics are. Everything that's in here is controlled back here. There's a lot of, I'll show you real quick. So this is all the lights for the game, back glass. And then behind this, this is where all your scores are. Behind this are all the boards for the game. Yeah, so if you look at that, all of that, every wire here goes to something here. And uh, this bar right here controls all the coils, all the flippers and the bumpers and everything like that. That is controlled by this. This is for uh, the sound. This is the vocalizer uh, board, which is, gives the game all its voice. And uh, this is the light board. There's a light board here, and there's also a second light board here, which is for the game. And this board right here is not an original board. And that's, that's, uh, that's an important thing to note. Like, if you're scared about, or if you're worried about, uh, getting something and having a board not work and not being able to fix it, a lot of these boards are remanufactured in much better modern ways. Yeah. And this is a, a set of, I forgot the name, but a, a set of pinballs that all use the same hardware, uh, chip-wise, like this board. They all use the same board, but, you know, but this board right here is a multi-board, and the way they made it was so that if you have this game and maybe 20 other pinball games, you can take this board and put it in there and just change a switch on it and it'll actually work for that game. So that's what I bought. This cost me about 250 for this board. I had to replace it for this. This is the original board that was in there. Uh, the battery on these, they go bad. They cause, they leak acid. And then once it gets on the board, it basically will ruin the board. Sometimes you might be able to get away with fixing it, sometimes you can't. Uh, I tried this, I went over, I was going over it with him and I still could not get it to work. We went, did a bunch of tests on it, I couldn't get it to work. So finally I broke down, I just ended up buying a multi-board and this saved the game basically. And I'm really glad to get with the company that I got it from. Uh, Alltech. What's that? Alltech is, oh, uh, Marco, Marco, yeah, yeah, but it's an Alltech MPU, so that's the name of the company that remanufactures the board. Um, and there's also, uh, that, that brings up a, a good point, like these games, you know, why would you put a battery that could leak in a game? These games were meant to last for maybe a couple years. Yeah, they, they, they really maybe. only so that you can get to play it and you're not gonna come out with new stuff and they figure we're gonna get rid of it anyway, so let's just go ahead. Yeah, so most pinball machines, the reason that there's not a ton of them around, and the same with arcade machines, I mean, um, I'm sure you saw Miss Pac-Man everywhere when it first came out. Yeah. Um, the reason, most of them ended up in the trash. Uh, which is very sad, but uh, yeah. And I worked, like, I worked for Namco, and we had a thing where we would, uh, we basically destroy games. Like I had games where we just take them to the dumpster, and uh, that's the policy with the company is that uh, you would have to destroy the game so people don't get their hands on it. It's a corporate thing. Don't don't ask me. I I am not. I'm, I work for corporate, but I'm not a corporate guy. Like any chance that I have to save something, I will. 
and that's how I ended up getting my main cab I was telling you about. Like, we destroyed the game. We were going to destroy the game, but I was like, hey, can I just take this home? And he's just like, all right, cool. So I took it home and was able to refurbish it into a main cabin. Uh, let's call this store real quick. All right, so if you've never seen the inside of a pinball machine, yeah. Here, I'll show you this. This is the back glass. You've got to be very careful with this. Never put those directly onto cement. They're tempered glass. Um, yes. So their weak point is their edge. That's why a pinball can hit the glass and not shatter, because uh, it's tempered glass. But if you put it on and you hit a rock or something, the whole thing will splinter. Yeah. yeah. I had that. Uh, I had an alien machine. Had a glass like that. I took the machine off. I was cleaning the game. I put it on the ground. Cleaned the game. It slid across the concrete and barely. Just it's like just a little. It just exploded in my head. So yeah. Very, so here we go. Oh, oh Do you have, you have a website? I just have to go really quickly. I don't have a website. I mean, I got Instagram, Facebook, all that. They're fine, but I just look bad at this evening. You'll see some of my standard comedy, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so this is the inside of the pinball machine, actually. Yeah, go, go all the way up. a uh, little little uh, piece of metal that would fall in place so the balls do not fall out because that's happened so many times. So that's that's another thing. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. You'll always be able to correct. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, I mean. It's how you learn. Everybody exactly. Knows. I've always told people the best way to learn how to do something is to break it. Because if you break it, now you're forced to try to put it back together and you have to figure it out or else you don't have something. So break it to fix it. Sometimes. This is all the stuff for this game. Uh, these are the coils that all the little pops and flips you hear. These are that's what this is. This is for the flippers. Uh, these drop targets here. That's what these are for. And then this little thing right here. This one resets them. My dad loves this game. Uh, uh, so right here, I have a solenoid here. This one went bad. And uh, this is for the little bumpers that shoot the ball around right in the back. I have four of them on this one. This one went bad. I don't know if I have a bad one. Oh, here's the one. Sorry about that. But this is a coil that was in the game. This little piece, this, this, this is one piece. This little piece in the middle is actually a separate piece. This actually is supposed to slide back and forth. And They're fused together. Well, like you can't you have to replace these and uh and it's literally just a coil of wire um if anybody's familiar with uh the rules of electricity it's uh you know the right hand rule and that you have a coil of wire so it acts as basically an inductor um and when you apply the uh electricity to it it performs a magnetic field and that magnetic field will take a piece of metal and shoot it in a direction that you want to so that's why that's why uh, that's how a coil works so when a pop bumper pulls it's literally pulling a piece of metal down, and as it pulls that piece of metal down, um, that's because the electric field is actually pulling it. So there's no, it's, it's a electromechanical interaction. Yeah. And this little right here is supposed to slide through this smoothly, and it doesn't even go inside because it's all melted inside. So once you get, you have those coil sleeves? You don't know if you brought any of those. No, I didn't bring any coil sleeves. Um, so the edges are made of plastic. One, one thing that uh, is interesting about pinball, there is no lubrication on any of this. The lubrication comes from the coil sleeves. They're plastic pieces. They're meant to be replaced. Um, so the, the coils themselves are plastic. Under, under, these paper, under this paper is a winding like you would see in a transformer. So the winding is a coil of insulated wire. Um, that has a certain number of turns. This, this one is a 26 1200, so it has 1200 turns on it. Um, and that's, that's an important number to well, remember. I yep. yep. I have no idea. Like, how, how do you know what kind of coil is it? Is it stamped on it? Is it written somewhere? Yeah, it's uh, so, I don't think you can see it on this one, but if you look at this, this is one of the old coils. It actually has a number on it. You can barely see it. That's the coil oh. that was on it before. Also, the manual is your friend. Yeah. Um, 
these old manuals are not like new? Yeah. Newer machines, I hate them because they don't give you enough information. They will tell you the basics of how to do it because they expect that. You know, oh, wow. Yeah. This, is, this comes with full schematics for every board yes. in the system. Yeah, yeah. yeah. everything that uses that. And uh, that that's the, that's the one for this game particularly, and this is a general uh, manual for, this is a general pinball manual. Because when you took them home, just like your TVs in the old days, they had the vacuum tubes, they had the vacuum tube testers. If your TV had a problem, you take the vacuum to the store, you put it up to the machine, you figure out what you need, and then you get it, buy it, take it home, and you fix your own TV. That, that was what they did back then. But now, when you get a book, the book for uh, the newer pinball, they still kind of do that, but some of the other games you've seen in the arcades, like Batman or, or any of those redemption games, the manual is probably like about this thick. Yeah, that's it. And it basically tells you how to put it together, and it may have a little breakdown, like schematic-wise, barely, and then that's pretty much it. They won't tell you most of the other. Oh, they said you want yeah. to arcade, right? Yeah, I, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. All, all, all the main ice, 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 every the company, company ice makes really good manuals, but. Yeah, um, that's how they go, buddy. I, 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 yeah. Let's how many people in the like that one? How many people are the number? How would you know what? Their diagram by yes. yes, yes, yes. In this is. manual, um, I don't know exactly what page it is, but in this manual, we'll tell you every coil and every coil's oh, rating. Yeah, it's usually. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I think I probably have a large. That's one. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah. It's it's uh in the past they really meant for people to work on these things. Yes. I I forgot my my middle school physics class. So running the coil make make uh, running electricity through the coil makes it magnetic. But what about uh, repel repulsion? By, by isn't there like a pinball function where where it'll actually push the ball away mag magnetically underneath? Oh yeah, I've seen those before. I barely worked with those. I had Indiana Jones, the current one that I was working with, that has that magnet. That was the first time I ever actually messed with a magnet pinball machine. But those ones usually, those drivers actually pull the ball. It has like sensors in it, so it knows there's a ball near it, and it'll actually activate and. That's why you see when sometimes you see a pinball machine where it throws the ball around, that really just activates. I don't know how those work. I've only ever worked with one, and I never actually pulled it out. It just, it was just there. Yeah, there, that basically acts as a standard magnet. Um, and so, if you if you take a game like uh, Getaway Two High Speed or No Fear, which is down in the arcade, um, it actually takes the ball and propels it forward. Um, and they use a series of magnets, and they pulse magnet, magnet, magnet. So it grabs the ball, shoots it forward. The next magnet grabs the ball, shoots it forward. The next magnet grabs the ball, shoots it forward. So it's actually getting pulled. Yep. 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 That's exactly it. Yep. But yeah, like you said, these manuals are really good and tells you pretty much everything you need to know about this. Uh, this coil right here, I I didn't replace it on purpose because I wanted to wait till I got here to do it. And uh, yeah, so this is the same coil as this. It's just manu not manufactured by Valley because they don't exist anymore. But this is the uh, coil. If anybody wants to look at this thing here, this is the uh, coil that goes in here, and this is the replacement coil for it. Yeah. So this is again. This is where um, you know people have remanufactured all these things so that you can buy brand new coils and make sure games keep up. Um, as these companies have gone out of business, um, people have really picked up the slack in terms of making sure that we could keep these games alive. Yeah, and, and again, that plastic piece is supposed, the plastic sleeve is supposed to come out. That is a replaceable part. That is how you lubricate the game. Yeah, I made the mistake of asking on a forum, hey, what lubrication do you use? Oh, people get mad, people get mad. Oh, get some vegetable oil and put it. They just like this. I was like, well, I was, I was, it's a help group. I wanted help. I asked for help. All you had to do was tell me, don't do that. <laughs> but instead, it was 30 or 40 comments of people just like trashing. The joys of the internet. Um, we had a question? Oh yeah, yeah. That that company is called uh, CPR, um, Classic Playfield Reproductions, 
Um, and so for games like Xenon, um, there's a centaur down in the arcade. Um, people have actually remanufactured this piece of wood with all of the artwork because you, if you think about it, you have a steel ball that's rolling over this and it's been rolling over this thousands and thousands of times. Um, and so the, if you do not properly clean and protect your play field, it wears down. And as we know, operators in the past, especially for those of us who grew up in the 90s, uh, people did not take care of these things. And so the artwork got ruined. Um, and so people have gone to the point of remanufacturing the entire play fields. Uh, yeah, because of modern manufacturing techniques, we can we can put layers of protective coat on them to keep that from happening. Yeah, but yep. Yeah. So this is the coil right here. This is one of the good sleeve. It goes right in, comes right out. It's supposed to be like that. Uh, this will be a replacement for the. I don't think we have time to do it. But so this bad, this coil is bad. I already cut it. And uh, so basically I would remove this bracket here and take this coil out, put this new coil into that same spot, solder these two wires onto the here, and once I do that, that pop bumper that's up here will start doing again. Uh, I can't do it myself. And that's again where this manual comes in because you're saying, well, what wires go to what? How do you know? The wires, are, if you look, are all color coded. Yeah. And this manual will tell you what color of wire goes to what solenoid and how to do everything. So, um, you know, these manuals are available in PDF form online. Um, everything except for Gottlieb, and that's a copyright issue. So they have chosen not to make their, the person that holds the rights have chosen not to make the manuals available. Um, other countries happen to have them. Um, so they are findable. Um, but, uh, you know, the the manual is a critical part for pinball. So that's something that you want to get familiar. If you really like stuff like this, get a reproduction of the manual. Lots of people will sell reproductions. They have really awesome artwork that's totally different from the rest of the game. So this image right here is not actually on the game. They specifically drew this image for the manual, which uh, I think is a really cool thing as somebody who loves the artwork of pinball that they actually went through and, um, you know, created a, uh, oh, okay. Yep. So yeah, I'm gonna replace that coil eventually, uh, someday. Uh, but yeah, that's basically what you wanna do. Uh, like I said, the book tells you everything. The book tells you everything. It tells you all the capacitors, all the diodes, like everything. You can just go to a hardware, if you have a nice hardware store that sells parts that you need, you can actually go and just buy the stuff you need and replace it yourself, which is exactly what I did. This was my learning machine, and this is how I learned pinball. I had other pinball machines I worked on, but not too many, uh, but this is uh, my baby right here. Uh, like I said, Susan Chiani, she did the music for it. Can you look at slides for it? Yep. The newer pinballs are a little bit easier. They have slider in it so that uh, but yeah the last last thing I will tell you before we end this and, and take any final questions is replace your pinballs um, they knock against stuff they get damaged and as they get damaged they can hurt the play field yep. so replace your pinballs it seems like a silly thing but uh, when you get that first pinball machine the first thing you should do is go online go to a place like Marco or any any of the other pinball man, uh, companies and buy new pinballs. They're shiny, they'll look good in your game, and they'll protect it. Um, all of the rubber pieces are replaceable. Obviously, rubber goes bad after a while. It becomes hard and brittle. So all of these, all of the pieces, I'm gonna take this off real quick like this. Um, this is replaceable. You wanna replace these. Um, it's, it's really critical to the playing of your game and how, you know, the feel of it. Um, you will know when you need to replace it by either it breaking or by uh, the fact that the game doesn't feel right. Yeah. So They make, and I was talking to him about this yesterday, they make uh, what they consider mods for the game. And they have these little rubber things. They have newer ones that are more bouncy than these. And it's, I guess it's to enhance the game or make it play differently. And I hate it because... I mean, it, personal preference, personal preference, but yeah. Very, 
Miami is this, and I can get the ball to go where I want it to, but with these other ones, it makes it so you have, you have to completely change the way you play it. But yeah, here we go. Okay, so um, as we as we wrap this up, um, do we have any final questions that people would like to ask? So we're going to sort of start cleaning up here to make sure we can get this next panel in here, but we'd be happy to answer questions while people do that. Yes? I will get with you after. Do you have any recommendations for fixing newer equipment like a 3DS or anything like that? Game consoles and things like that are, are definitely out of my realm of expertise. I focus on older stuff. Um, so I guess my, my definite advice would be to, again, find the communities that do that and see. Those are places you can go to. You can check online. Uh, they sell